Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Jay and welcome to the channel and welcome back to Park Reanima here in Prehistoric Kingdom. I know it's been a bit of a while without videos, I do apologize. Uh, life is kind of hectic for me at the moment. Lots of stuff with work, lots of stuff with life. Um, all good, all good, nothing like particularly difficult for me to handle, it's just a lot <laughs> essentially. And of course because of that videos have taken a little bit of a, a back seat for a while. Um, in terms of Prehistoric Kingdom, very much still enjoying it, really really enjoying building at the moment in Prehistoric Kingdom. Uh, the other games for Planet Zoo and for Jurassic World Evolution 2, I'm gonna hold off for a little bit. For Jurassic World, of course the new DLC is coming out relatively soon, that's the Biosyn expansion for Dominion. And of course Jurassic World Dominion itself releases uh, on the 10th in the UK, I think, and I'm watching it on the 11th, so looking forward to that. But so I think I'll hold off on any Jurassic World Evolution content until that, um, until the movie comes out, until the DLC is released. So that we'll have, you know, more to work with and maybe we'll even start a new park. I don't know if I'll continue the one that we've currently got, we'll see how that goes. Uh, and Planet Zoo, I'm also just waiting on it a little bit to, to find some inspiration and to really, I don't know, get back into the flow of things. But in Prehistoric Kingdom, still really, really enjoying it, so we'll stick with this for now and I, I'm still... You know, I feel like I'm building some pretty cool stuff anyway, so yeah, definitely had a really good run of things with the Prehistoric Kingdom so far. Today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be building a very, very large uh, multi-species habitat. So far we've been doing almost purely Cretaceous Asia animals. Um, I believe the old Cretaceous animals, I think. The Archaeopteryx might be Jurassic actually, so I'm not 100. Wait, did we put in Archaeopteryx? No, we put in Microraptor, which is early Cretaceous. And um, yeah, all these animals have been in Cretaceous Asia, but today we're kind of venturing more towards South America for this big habitat. We are going to be including an Argentinosaurus, uh, two of them. They're going to be the feature star animals of this habitat, and they are spectacular. This game knows how to do like sauropods well. Those Argentinosaurus, the way they move, the way they behave, the way they look, everything you know, really screams sauropod to me, like they're big titanic creatures and they move in that, you know, big slow way. It's it's really cool to watch and you'll see in the cinematics later, they, they really are stunning to have in your park. So huge, huge fan of them. Um, in terms of other animals, it felt weird just having sauropods. Sauropods, I feel, always have to be accompanied by smaller animals so that you can really appreciate their scale. And the thing is, in Argentinosaurus's habitat in South America back in the day, I say back in the day like it was the 40s, I'm talking about the Mesozoic. <laughs> um, it did share its habitat with a lot of other animals, but none that we have in the game at the moment. Uh, most famously, of course, the big carnivores like Giganosaurus, uh, Mapusaurus, that sort of thing. Um, a few other smaller carnivores, some, I think an Abelisaurid and a few kind of raptor type dinosaurs as well. Uh, but in terms of herbivores that it shared its habitat with, we don't really have anything super analogous. There have been some remains of iguanodontids found near Argentinosaurus, so I've taken the liberty of using iguanodon itself here to represent that indeterminate iguanodontid. And just because we didn't have anything else to fill it out with, I decided to use a few dryosauruses. Not very accurate at all. There would have been probably some small herbivores, but we really don't know what they would have been like. Dryosaurus is just the closest kind of example we have to a small kind of herbivore that we could fit into this ecosystem. But in reality, it was probably something else entirely that we just don't have the um, fossil material for. But yeah, regardless, I think the habitat turns out great. There's some really interesting viewing um, options that were put in, which I'll explain kind of closer to the time. But we start out with this elevated platform really near the front. Here I'm just looking at the Argentinosaurus and kind of working out what species to include. I've, like I said, end up with the Iguanodon. Um, the Iguanodon in the game is stunning, like really, really beautiful. Uh, and I chose one of the slightly duller skins for this one because I don't want the Iguanodon to overshadow the Argentinosaurus. Not like it could with the size of it, but I think it works out uh, pretty well. Um, and the dry soil as well, I chose relatively dull skin. For the Argentinosaurus, I chose this nice kind of like leopardy spotty pattern, which I think looks really, really good. There you see me trap a few guests inside the um inside the platform. 
here just doing some terrain work and stuff. Um, but yeah, while we're doing all this, do you want to talk about some other stuff that's been happening recently? Of course, last week or the week before that, uh, was it last week? Might have been. Um, Prehistoric Planet came out, the new documentary series from Apple TV. And I, of course, watched it a million times. I think I've watched every episode at least twice, maybe three times now. I'm going to give it another watch at some time soon because it was incredible. Um, and Prehistoric Kingdom, I feel like, is a great opportunity for me to talk about that because they both have very similar um, ethos behind them almost. Uh, but before I continue talking about that, actually, just quick note, here's what we're... This is kind of the interesting viewing area, the first of two that we're going to be doing. It's kind of built into the hillside and there's a long corridor that leads towards it. And guests can go here and have like a nice, you know, very secluded area to look at the dinosaurs. Where the dinosaurs themselves shouldn't feel too threatened by the people because the people are very secluded and like protected behind the glass here, built right into the hillside. I think it works out pretty well. But yeah, um, Prehistoric Planet just blew me away. Such a beautiful depiction of all these animals. I went to the premiere and I was just, oh, I could not tell you how incredible that was of an experience. And then of course I watched it at home with all the other episodes because the premiere only showed us the first two episodes. And yeah, just highly, highly recommend all of you go and watch it. Even if dinosaurs aren't your thing, I think you will enjoy it because it presented very much like a regular kind of wildlife natural history documentary. It was made by BBC Studios, which I uh, I work at, but I work at the science unit in BBC Studios, and Prehistoric Planet was made by the Natural History Unit, which is based in Bristol. I'm here based in London, so I didn't get to work on it. Um, I didn't even know it was in production because that's they're quite like uh, separate, the Natural History Unit and the Science Unit. Like here at the Science Unit, we do do dinosaur docs as well. So if any of you watch Dinosaurs: The Last Day or Dinosaurs: the Final Day with David Attenborough a few months ago. That was by the science unit where I work at and I knew a few people who worked on it. I haven't worked on any dinosaur docs at the moment, though that is a dream of mine to work on one. It would be so, so cool. In fact, right now my goal is like to eventually work on hopefully a future season of Prehistoric Planet. That would be just the coolest thing ever. Um, I got to very briefly meet uh, some of the paleontologists involved as well, which is really, really cool. But yeah, just such a fantastic piece of television, such a brilliant documentary. Really, you know, really showcases these creatures as animals. And that's something Prehistoric Kingdom does brilliantly as well. So really, I thought it was a good place to talk about it. And I might do at some point a full video about my thoughts on Prehistoric Planet, just because I think, you know, it's it really did do something quite amazing and quite special. And I think... Prehistoric Kingdom, like I said, does aspire to do a very similar thing, just in a different medium. So, yeah, it's <laughs> just really, really fantastic. Um, can't say enough good things about it. But one thing I thought that was relevant to this episode is how they portrayed sauropods. So, sauropods are usually portrayed as just kind of like gentle giants and kind of like elephant-like almost. When they're really incredibly unique um, creatures, they're huge, of course, and that's their defining feature, but... Beyond that, that, that size lends to some really fascinating ways of movement, of behavior, and Prehistoric Planet and Prehistoric Kingdom both depict them in such interesting ways that really highlight the unique aspects of being the largest creatures to ever walk the earth, you know, like how they would move and behave and how they would interact with others of their species. In Prehistoric Planet, there's an incredible... Um, sequence where male dreadnoughtists like fight it out for uh, mating rights and stuff like that and it's just incredible seeing it they really nail the the scale and the power of these animals but also just how weird they were because they're not anything like our large animals today they they're just entirely different creatures and it, it's hard to get that right and i think they they really did a stunning job on that so yeah um, another brilliant thing as well is the portrayal of some of the other creatures in Prehistoric Planet, like Dino Kairos. And of course, we have a Dino Kairos here. And really, it, it really nails home how weird that animal was, and also how beautiful, how, like, just, there's nothing else on the planet like it. And Prehistoric Kingdom, again, hits home just the same way, so. I think that's just a, a, a statement to how these people understand the animals that they're portraying. Um, here we just made the long corridor 
that leads up to the viewing area here. Uh, because it was very long, I put in like a pseudo like travelator kind of situation in there. You know those um, like escalators that are like flat on the ground, that kind of thing. Yeah, those, those ones that you see in airports and in aquariums. Yeah, I put some of those in and I think it ends up looking pretty good. Just starting out with some light foliage here, but we'll uh, expand on that a little bit going forward. Making some ramps and stuff so people get in and out relatively easily. I'm just gonna get a quick drink of water because I'm very thirsty. And because I was talking way too fast a bit. Whenever I start talking about things I'm really excited about, I just um, end up talking really fast and I kind of forget how to breathe, which is, you know, not great. I should remember how to breathe. Um, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much it for what I wanted to say with Prehistoric Planet, which I, I didn't actually say much. I just kind of gushed about it for a while, which is honestly not that weird. That's just something I do. <laughs> Gosh, I love the scaling tool in this game. Look at that, like you can just fit pieces together so easily in these awkward little gaps by scaling it. Like, it's just incredible, just ah, so 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 good. Anyways, um, do let me know what other species you'd like to see in this park. I don't know if we're gonna go and do a Cenozoic section. We have three Cenozoic animals in the park, of um, in the game, sorry. We have the Smilodon, we have the Woolly Mammoth, and we have the Celodonta, which is the uh, woolly rhinoceros and there's only three which makes me feel like maybe we should save them for when we have more of those animals so maybe we'll keep this park to just dinosaurs for now there's a uh, Nigel Marvin doing oh all my Psittacosaurus escaped and I have no idea how I think they clip onto the um the guest path and then they walk out but they were just walking among the guests it was really funny actually to watch that happen I'm here creating the, the ramp that leads down towards the, the corridor. This is only the first of two different viewing areas that we'll have within this habitat. The other one is going to be an elevated viewing platform that you'll see towards the second half of this video. I do apologize for that, we do not have a live portion of today's video. I know I said in the last one we'll do one this time. I'll try and do one next time. Uh, again, just because time constraints have been a little bit of a pain recently. Uh, I'm also going to be moving relatively soon to a new place within the next month or so. Uh, so again, another thing that might t uh, take up time. So a uh, big apology in advance for not an awful lot of content, I guess. But yeah, it's just, you know, life is, is hectic sometimes. <laughs> I hope all of you are doing well anyways. It's nice that summer is coming up now. Things are finally, thankfully warming up. I'm going on a film shoot next week for work, which is really exciting. I'm going up to Scotland, which is kind of a shame because I just mentioned how things are warming up and now I'm going to Scotland, which is notoriously, you know, not particularly warm. <laughs> so, you know, I get a, a week away from the sunshine, maybe, uh, but that's going to be quite cool. I can't wait to tell you guys more about the documentary I'm working on. I can't really say an awful lot now because it's just work stuff, but... Uh, maybe in about, you know, I think a few months or so when things are, when it's actually often like out there, I can talk a bit more about it. Uh, but it's a science talk and it's something I really enjoy working on at the moment. Because, yeah, it's just fun. I love um, communicating science and I kind of feel like I've got really lucky and I've got a really great job where I get to, you know, consult on science and talk about science in a way. So, it's a lot of fun. And I think I mentioned like a long time ago, I, I really want to start a science YouTube channel where I talk about science and stuff. And I've been wanting to do that for such a long time and I keep putting it off or I edit the videos but never upload them or I never start the actual channel. And I think maybe it's time I actually finally do it <laughs> properly because um, I don't know, I just wanted to do it for such a long time and I keep forgetting it. Oh, these are the pseudo travel leaders, by the way. Um, and most recently, I edited a video and I was so ready to upload it, but then I had that whole issue of my computer dying. And I actually lost all that footage, which is such a shame. And it made me realize, like, okay, I, if I want to do this, I got to do it. I can't just hold out for ages because stuff like this could happen again. So that's what I'm going to try and do this month. I'm going to finally launch that science channel. Please hold me to that. <laughs> uh, actually, don't hold me the, to that. I'm too anxious for that sort of thing. <laughs> I'm gonna try very hard to actually launch it because I really would love to start talking about science more in my own space, in my own time, because there's so many interesting, amazing things about science that I love and I wanna share. 
but I feel like I, I need that platform and I need that space to do it. So I'm going to try and launch that channel. Hopefully this month we'll see. Um, it's a good month to do it as well because it's Pride Month and I love talking about queer science. Um, for example, in the natural world, uh, like queerness exists in so many really interesting ways, you know, like with uh, all these different, you know, um, sexualities and sexes and diversity in that sense. They're kind of just present everywhere in nature in, in such huge amounts. Like, there's over 4,000 species of animal that have been known to exhibit homosexuality, for example, and that's so cool. You know, stuff like that that I want to talk about, or the fact that there's some fungi out there which have thousands of individual sex chromosomes, which is bonkers because they're fungi. And we can barely even understand, like, these concepts because they, they're so far removed from how we think of the world. And But it, it's brilliant and it's so cool, and I love being able to celebrate queerness both in humans and in nature. So it's one of the things I would love to talk about. Um, and it's, it's such a fantastic thing. But yeah, um, so hopefully, hopefully I will, I will actually get those videos up and running. <laughs> but, but we'll see. I'm, I'm going to try and hold myself to it. That's, yeah, fingers crossed. And if I do, of course, I'll put it on this channel and be like, hey guys, I've launched a new channel. Go check it out, that sort of thing. And hope I'm going to try my best if I do launch a channel to not have it overlap um, in the sense that I'm not gonna, not overlap, that's the wrong word, I'm not gonna have it hinder this channel too much because I still really enjoy playing games and, you know, making these videos and I'm sure it'll remain pretty separate, so, yeah, fingers crossed. But yeah, um, <laughs> let's just go back to talking about what's on the screen. So I made a kind of nice tall uh, fence that's gonna go around where the pre-existing fence is. In the new update they, later this month, I believe we're getting null fencing finally, so I'm looking forward to that. They'll make fencing a lot easier to work around and um, it will be kind of a situation where it's not too difficult to uh, to hide the pre-existing fencing, which is what it feels like now. It's a bit like we have to work around uh, solid fences. Here I'm also adding in the foliage and stuff and this is where the habitat really starts to come to life a bit more. Here I got the idea kind of, of what the viewing platforms look like from some of the uh, prefabs. I was not going to build my own sauropod house, I was just I was just not, it was going to be too much work. So I found this one that they pre-built which looks fantastic, I, I think it looks so 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 good. Uh, deleted some of the fencing so it looks like it's going to fuse with the outside wall, put in some flooring and in a bit you'll see me change some of the materials, I think you saw me change the roof a second ago. But I also end up changing the colour of the walls and stuff just to make it look a bit more interesting. Um, Putting in some slant flooring as well so the animals can get up and down a bit easier. I think I forgot to actually add in any um, any shelter for the smaller animals, so I might do that off screen at some point. But yeah, just changing up the colors a bit, putting in a wooden roofing, and I think it ends up looking quite good. Now, there's not an awful lot left in this segment of the, the episode. We're just gonna uh, essentially put down some branches and stuff just to make it look a bit more like weather and there's, there's things around and stuff like that. And oh, my favorite thing to do is to create some very simple pseudo enrichment by putting rope around some logs to act as kind of like scratching posts. Create some big ones for the sauropods and one that's been knocked over by the sauropods, some smaller ones for the smaller animals. You know, they're not obviously going to be used, but I think they look very cool. Uh, the food, of course, for the animals. Um, I think we're getting food management in this new update in May as well, which is going to be pretty cool. So we have different types of food for different animals and we'll choose like quality of food, I think. I'm not 100% sure. And here you see me start to work on the uh, the viewing platform for this area. This was a bit tricky to do and I ended up running into a couple little glitches where I deleted a piece but it still uh, appeared on screen forever and I can't remove them. So they work around those a little bit. But I think they end up looking pretty cool and they give you a much closer view of like um, the the sauropods. You'll able, be able to see them at almost eye height, which would be very cool, I think. And really, again, harkens to the height of these animals because you'll be essentially on a three to four story building and you're still not going to be the same height as these animals, which is just crazy and very, very, very cool. God, I love sauropods. <laughs> I used to, like growing up, obviously theropods were my favourite and theropods kind of still are my favourite, they're very cool, you know. Spinosaurus being my favourite and Dinochirus and T-Rex and you have all those really cool dinosaurs. But sauropods, there's nothing that really captures 
what's so unique about dinosaurs than a sauropod that is like yeah that's nothing like it on on earth <laughs> ever since the sauropods left um my partner august is sauropods are his favorite too they're just they're just so cool um yeah that there we go you see my first form those two pieces just refused to disappear even after i deleted them so i just um had to cover them up with some rock work make it look like the rock was supporting the um the pathway up towards the platforms but hey ho it worked out pretty all right and uh, it was a little bit tricky to work with the circles because I had to, you know, leave space for an entrance. But weirdly enough, the guests don't actually use this for some reason. I think somewhere along the way, the pathfinding probably doesn't work super well. Um, so the guests don't actually come up here. So it's more like implied at the moment, which is which is not awful by any means. And I think it still looks uh, pretty good. Still very happy with how this all ends up looking. Here is just raising it up slightly to meet with the platform and then joining it up to the other platform and that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it for this episode anyways, we're just doing some little bit of cleanup here, a few more bits and pieces of foliage here and there, not an awful lot else to be done today. So let me know in the comments what you thought of today's episode, I really enjoyed this build, I think it's one of my favourites so far. And in the cinematics you'll really be able to see how the animals fit in here and how great they look, I think. The team has done a phenomenal job on the dinosaurs in this game. I can't say it enough. Every single one I put down is just as beautiful as the last. You can tell each one has had so much care put into it. The Argentinosaurus might so far be one of my favorites in the game, along with things like the Dinochirus, just because they really nail what makes those species special. And with the Argentinosaurus, you'll really be able to see as well some of the more unique aspects, like the, you know, the big, um, back spines that they have here like these really rugged bony um kind of spines on the back for protection and it looks really cool that's a, obviously a bit more of a speculative feature but i think it still looks uh fantastic anyways that is uh, it for today's episode thank you for listening to me ramble for a whole bunch i just haven't recorded a slightly longer video in a while so i just was like what do i even talk about but then i guess i just ramble so <laughs> thank you for, for listening to me ramble for a while just adding into final bits and pieces. Um, I think we'll be able to share maps and stuff on the Steam Workshop relatively soon. So whenever that support comes in, I'll share this map with all of you guys. So you can kind of wander around Park the Animal yourself and have a look and see what you think. Oh, and an absolute last thing to do is to add some very simple uh, canopies over the pathways. Just so people can get a little bit of shade. Now, with all that being said, and with this episode wrapping up very quickly... I just want to say again, thanks so much for watching, thanks for all your patience and support for however long it has been, um, and as always, I will see you all in the next video, bye!